Flying a helicopter or rotorcraft requires a different set of skills than flying an airplane, although there are some similarities. While an airplane depends on forward motion to move air over the wings and create lift, a helicopter creates lift using rotating blades. From a master to the young men who are cutting their teeth in the trade. Friction? Friction is off, sir. Oh, okay. Good night, sir. Friends, they're all out of 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 Friends. Flying officer Henry Ozodinobi is a graduate of the Nigerian Defense Academy in Kaduna, armed with a bachelor's degree in economics. He is pursuing building skills as a helicopter pilot. Having gone through the ground school, he is currently training on the simulator. And when he is out of this session, there is time for conversation. Because before you actually carry out an exercise in the aircraft, an actual exercise, you have to practice it first of all in the simulator because the sim is like something that will give you knowledge on what to expect before you fly the real aircraft. So, as a pilot, you need not only knowledge and attitude, you also need skills. For Chime Emmanuel, a love for anything mechanical is what has brought him here. He is going through the mills or the classroom. The basic rules of flying are taught here. I was very, very happy because I see my dreams coming true. Actually, when you come into the world of mechanical engineering, it's a vast world. But when you talk of aerodynamics, it's like it is all about mechanical engineering. So when I see myself here, that is what made me to see that it's like I am a born flyer. An opportunity, but it is a call. If not that it is my call, I would have left this area because the demand is very high. Ekemini Collings is a lieutenant in the Nigerian army. The helicopter is an attraction, but he must first learn the basics. That's what he is currently doing. Actually, I just finished my ground school. Because when you finish your ground school, you don't just go straight to the aircraft. You go through a simulator training. And the simulator is like a replica of what you have in the actual aircraft. So you have to go through the simulator first. When you are proficient enough in the simulator, that's when you can go to the actual aircraft. I actually wanted to be in the Air Force but when I went to in the Nigerian Defense Academy. I was given the Army. So I still had hopes that somehow, somehow, I'll find myself here. They're not the only ones. Two others also share their thoughts on this training. I always wanted to be a pilot, but one thing led to another and it was not opportune. But along the line, I got this opportunity and I applied. I was lucky to be selected. And it's like a dream come true. The little things that you tend to overlook when you're in the outside world, you don't know what they are. When you get to the aviation industry or the aviation world, when you now start understanding the concept, you, you'll be stunned like, so this is what makes this work, this is what makes this work like this. It's quite very interesting. I think that's what chose me the most. Actually, at first, I never liked helicopter. I prefer fixed wing because now that has been my dream to fly fixed wing. You really, there are some things, there are some factors affecting helicopter in flight. Like the factors that affect helicopter in flight are different factors really that affect fixed wing. Because the helicopter can just 
stand on its own and at least you've let to, to use the layman language can just move up on its own and stay but staying on its own there must be some forces that are making it to stay above the ground unlike the fixed wing the fixed wing must have a takeoff run before it moves to the air while helicopter on the spot it can just raise up and the way it is done so it's just a normal, it's not, it's not something normal. Definitely there are some things acting on it that is making it to. So you as a pilot, you need to make extra effort to keep it above the ground. To arrive at the end of this goal, determination and strong skills will be a survival factor. And all they pray for is to succeed at their trade. Ethiopian Airlines is expected to have 140 aircraft in its fleet by 2025. This is according to the general manager of Ethiopian Airlines, Mr. Solomon Begashaw, who confirmed that the airline currently has 76 aircraft running a vision 2025, which is a 15-year plan that started since 2010. In Solomon Begashar's words, our vision in 2025 is to be the leading airline group in Africa with seven profit-oriented centers and a four-star airline with five-star services. Our mission is to transport 22 million passengers per annum, but we are currently at 6 million plus per annum. In terms of cargo, the airline is to hit 820 tons per annum, but currently doing 220 tons of cargo. Ethiopian Airlines is projecting $10 billion per annum in 2025 with a profit of $1 billion. Nigeria has taken a major step towards establishing a new national airline with the inauguration of a committee to consult with local and international partners for the issue. A press statement issued by the Ministry of Aviation said Permanent Secretary Hajia bin Tabelo charged the Ministerial Committee on the establishment of a national carrier to pursue the assignment with vigor in view of its national importance. Ms. Bello said the inauguration of the committee became imperative in view of the interest shown in the venture by President Mohamed Buhari and his recent directives to the ministry to immediately commence the process of establishing one. The establishment of a national carrier is not only justified by economic considerations but also strategic national interest and job creation. Captain Mohammed Abdul Salam, a former managing director of Discovery Airlines, will serve as the chairman of the panel. It is tasked with reviewing previous consultants' submissions and recommendations on a national carrier and reviews the report on the failure of the defunct Nigeria Airways and other failed private airlines. A male cabin crew member of Arik Air was on Monday, August the 24th, arrested at Heathrow Airport, London, by the United Kingdom's Border Force for allegedly possessing items suspected to be banned substances. The airline, according to its spokesman, Mr. Ola Debanji, is presently carrying out private investigations to determine how the cabin crew member came about the banned substance. The cabin crew member was caught with a substance weighing 2.76 kilograms and is suspected to be cocaine. Mr. Debanji said Arik Air will also cooperate fully with UK authorities and other appropriate agencies in their investigations. According to him, the airline again reaffirms its commitment to the fight against drug and illicit substances trafficking and will not tolerate the use of any of its aircraft or crew as a courier for banned items and substances. This is not the first time an Arik crew member is being caught. 
In 2013, two of its crew members were arrested by border force officials at Heathrow Airport after they were caught in possession of six kilograms of cocaine. At least 11 people are said to have died in the jet crash in Shoham that happened on Saturday, August the 22nd. A crane has removed the wreckage of the jet, but more bodies have not been found yet. The Hawker Hunter jet came down on the A27 during an aerial display at the air show. The aviation regulator, the Civil Aviation Authority, the CAA, has announced significant restrictions on vintage jets, saying they will not be allowed to perform high-energy aerobatics over land at air shows following the crash. According to the CAA, the ban on the Hawker Hunter will remain in place until further notice and will be conducting additional risk assessment on all forthcoming civil air displays. Meanwhile, the Royal Air Forces Association, the RAFA, which organizes Shoreham Air Show, has defended the event's safety record that it has many years of experience in running air shows. The UK government is offering its full support to both the Civil Aviation Authority and the Air Accidents Investigation Branch to ensure everything possible is being done to find out what happened and ensure air displays take place safely and follow the highest standards. This is our cutting call on the program. You can also watch past episodes of the program on YouTube slash channels TV slash Aviation This Week and also reach us on our feedback platform. I'm Bukola Joe Kitumbi. Next week is another date.